Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some entitled exes with no shortage of the audacity. Here's some things that my soon to be ex-husband used to do that I didn't realize wasn't normal until after I left. Okay. When the Wi-Fi guy came to install our internet, he made me FaceTime him the entire time because he said that I might try and sleep with him. And then he still accused me of sleeping with him saying that I could have slept with him before I called him or after I hung up the phone. Didn't tell me happy birthday until right before I fell asleep on my birthday, two months after we got married. Gaslit and manipulated me into not having a job and said, I just want you to be a stay at home wife. And then when like money problems would come up or any kind of issue with me would come up, he would complain about how I didn't have a job and how I'm just mooching off of him. Only came home and ate dinner with me maybe twice a week because he was at his parents or his brother's house. Parents or brother's house? I'm sorry, but anybody who's that obsessed with cheating and thinks that you're cheating is cheating themselves. Yes, say it louder for the people in the back. Anyone that is that obsessed with cheating is cheating themselves. Roll the tape. Not get me a Christmas present, but instead he gave me his debit card and said, don't know what you want. You got 50 bucks, go get yourself something nice. Complained and told me that I was folding his clothes wrong when he never ever did laundry, wash clothes, nothing. He told me over a year after we'd been married and I was pregnant that he wanted multiple wives and then he was upset that I was upset about it. Got pissed when my parents bought us groceries one time. Told me that he didn't believe that our son was his son and when I said get a paternity test, he said, I don't even want to because it could be so close to my brother's DNA that you probably slept with that oh. it would just say that it was mine and I would still never know. What? When the electricity went out on two of our rooms, including a bathroom and our washing machine was broken and I tried to get him to fix it for about nine months, he told me that I should have been more grateful and that it was a test to me because people back in the olden days didn't have that kind of stuff. So I should have just been grateful that I had it in the first place, even if it was broken. Okay, that's all for now, bye. Sounds like a really nice guy. Exactly the kind of guy that you wanna be married to. Ladies, take note. If he does all those things, it means he's a solid dude. Solid. How they treat you on your birthday is a huge indicator. I mean, if someone can't stand to see you have a day about you, if they have such a problem with one day being about you and having to do things for you, run. Girl, run so fast! How did this even get into marriage? Uh, I mean, you would be surprised. You'd be surprised. You know, when they're like abusive like that, it's not necessarily the way they are all the time. Especially when you're mad at them. They always seem to know what to do and how to treat you when you threaten to leave and never come back. You'd be surprised. I'm pretty sure the statistic is it takes seven times to leave an abusive partner. Curious to know what was the last straw. You just stated like at least three or four last straws. Pretty much everything you said would have been a last straw for me. <laughs> no straws left. Picking the straws. Ain't nothing left in these hands but shame. If you think that you have a crazy ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend story, mm -mm, I have you beat. This morning, I was in a parallel universe, also known as the bus. I still don't have a car, <laughs> and as much as I need to be done with the bus for my mental health, I have never heard more wild stories in my entire life <laughs> than I have in the last week and a half. Okay, so when I get on, there is a man that is already sitting behind me. He's a college student, and I know that because he has a backpack in the seat next to him, and he has a beanie that says FOB. Full disclosure, I thought legitimately meant like he had a hat for a key FOB. Until <laughs> the man gets on to the next stop and starts walking down the aisle and is looking in my direction, and it's like, what's up, dude? and I don't know this man. And my, of course, natural reaction is to be like, what's up? He was not looking at me. He was looking at the guy behind me. He was looking at Fob. And then he was like, cool Fall Out Boy hat. And I was like, oh my God, of course it's Fall Out Boy and not Fob. Anyway, so he's like, <laughs> what are you doing on the bus? I thought you lived in the dorms. For the next 12 minutes and 35 seconds, give or take seven seconds, I was privy to the most wild ex-girlfriend story I have ever heard in my entire life. One day, they will write books about this. It comes in three parts for why the man was on the bus. Part one, he is no longer living in a dorm. As as I learned, over the summer, he broke up with his girlfriend of four months. That is it, just four months. And she was so upset that during the first week of moving into the dorms, the very first week, he found out what dorm that he lived in, somehow got access to it, broke in and put raw chicken all around his dorm, everywhere. 
How much raw chicken? I don't know. He didn't give details, but it was certainly enough to where the stench was so bad that the dorm was deemed unlivable. The university actually had to step in and decide that his dorm was unlivable. Oh my. Raw chicken. As a result, I discovered he then had to live with his parents in the suburbs. First week of classes, he was taking a ride share to campus. He can't do that anymore because he no longer has credit cards because she reported fraud. By calling his bank, pretending to be his mom, he's saying that the card had been stolen. He got a new card. She did it again. To recap, he now does not have a dorm on campus and he no longer has access to banks. So his parents bought him like a very old, very used car just to be able to commute back and forth. But he can no longer use that car because on Saturday night, she appeared at their house, discovered he was using said car, and apparently, while he was sleeping, put concrete mixer in his gasoline tank. Here's the weirdest part. I was legitimately ready to step in and be like, I, I know some attorneys who can help you right now. Until his friend was like, what are you gonna do? And he was like, I don't know but I'm seeing her on Friday. What? We might hook up. No! I'm sorry. Are you insane? Okay, I'm sorry. You did it to yourself. Like, literally, no. <laughs> Sir, she is a danger to your safety. I would say it's probably in your best interests to find somebody else to hook up with. You mean to tell me that this is how someone reacted after being broken up with? following a four month relationship, be freaking for real. Like, listen, I know we're in college and it feels like the world is ending when someone dumps us, et cetera, et cetera. But like, really, really? Just cry in your dorm room and eat itchy band soup like the rest of us. Like, damn, it ain't that serious. As a former crazy ex-girlfriend, I just want to know what did he do to make her do this? Okay, okay, all right. It could be entirely possible that she is just crazy on her own. But it also could be entirely possible that he did something to make her crazy. Then again, though, why would you then invite said man back into your life? Who can afford to waste chicken like that? <laughs> Girly pop, those cutlets. They're out of control, man. Those cutlets are crazy. Especially if you live in Canada. The price of groceries right now is like, okay, guess I'm on a diet. I guess I'm just gonna eat one meal a day. Literally, that's honestly how I feel. It's like, okay, oatmeal for breakfast and then one meal. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Time to be skinny. This all could literally be like the government's plan to make us all lose weight because we can't afford to eat. Well, I'm not pretending to say that I can't afford to eat, okay? Like, I can afford to eat. We're okay in this house. However, it doesn't mean that I like spending $500 on a couple of things at a grocery store, okay? Obscene. Like, it's actually nuts. Like, I went to a grocery store the other day and it was, I think I got like sliced mango and like a salad and some meat. The meat's where they get you, eh? The, the meat's expensive. And the sliced mango, realistically, girl, you gotta you slice that <laughs> yourself. And it ended up being like $175. It's crazy. This one really was like surviving an entitled ex. But I'm sorry, but if she's doing all of that to you and you're still willing to just go and get the poop, <laughs> then like, you know what you're getting yourself into. Your fault. <laughs> I dated an FBI agent for six months. Or did I? Reasons why I think my ex-boyfriend lied to me about being an FBI agent. Let's go. First date. We met on Hinge, okay? Complete strangers. Mm -hmm. Within the first five minutes, he tells me he's an FBI agent. I remember because I said, it's giving Agent Cody Banks. And then I asked him to compare it to Spy Kids, the movie. Then everyone else we met, he'd be very vague, like, I work for the government or the Federal Bureau. And I said, how come you told me on our first date that you're an FBI agent and you can't tell other people? And he said, that well, part. I knew I could trust oh, you. Oh, right. And I said, right. oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Within the first five minutes oh, of a yeah, Hinge yeah. date, it really is the perfect alibi. If I had a dollar for every time I heard, I can't answer that, I would literally say, how was your day today? And he'd be like, you know you can't ask me about my work. And I wouldn't question it, because I'm like, yeah, you can't ask Agent Cody Banks about his day. It's a secret.
which is why it made sense that he lived a very secretive life, okay? No social media, not even a LinkedIn profile, besties. No friends. This was my favorite. He'd say, I really want you to meet them, but they're on a special mission right now. So a not special here. mission. Three, wow. No real information about him. He told me he grew up on a Because he gave you a fake name, babe. So I would call him my cowboy. Ooh. Your cowboy. Then we went to Colorado and I said, oh, which one was your elementary school? Oh, I went to elementary school in New Jersey. What's a cowboy doing in New Jersey? The stories weren't adding up. Here's my personal favorite. The FBI told me you are texting your ex, something he told me with a detailed description of how in the hell the FBI had that information on me. Later, come to find out my roommate saw him going through my computer and my text messages, which might have been the most investigative work he really had ever done. <laughs> About halfway through our relationship, he tells me he needs to go to Washington, D.C. to go to the FBI Academy and do training. I said, how are you already an FBI agent without training? And he said, well, it was a COVID exception. You can blame anything on COVID these days. He said, the Academy was closed and they needed agents, so they allowed agents to act as agents without training. But now that restrictions have lifted, I need to go to D.C. and get my training. So, training time. Or is it? He leaves for training. It's a six month course. He says, I'll go for three months, then I will move there and be with him for the last three months of his course. Well, guess what? We actually broke up. And three months into his course, I get an incriminating phone call. And this is the phone call where I finally realize this man has been lying about being an FBI agent. I'm listening to this story and I know it's also how you're telling it, but like, girl, come on. Seriously? Seriously? This man is so Delulu. And you're a little Delulu as well. Like, come on. You beautiful, but you a little Delulu to think that this man really would be an FBI agent and would tell you. Maybe that's CIA. Maybe CIA wouldn't tell you. I'm not exactly sure of the government bodies in, in the States and how they work. But it seems like a very convenient excuse to be like, can't talk about my work. Where were you last weekend? Oh, can't talk about it. Can't talk about it. It's actually kind of genius. If you find someone to fall for it, like that is genius. Side note, I really appreciate the like PowerPoint presentation you have put together for us. It's very helpful. I'm a visual learner. I also like subtitles and words. It's very, very helpful. Anyone else? I have retained all of that information. Like it is in there. He's at training in Washington DC at the FBI Academy, as far as I know. He told me it's a six months course. Right now, at the time he calls me, we're broken up by the way, it's three months into his course. Hello? Hi. How's training? Oh, I'm actually on my first assignment. I say, how? You're not done training for three more months. See, people who tell the truth, they remember details. People who lie, they have so many lies, they, change they can't the story. keep track of all the details. He goes, oh mm. right, well with COVID, it actually turned into an accelerated course. We just worked through all the weekends, so we finished it in three months instead of six. Interesting. Another reason I realized he is finally lying on this phone call was, when it started, it was very loud on the phone. I go, where are you? It's so loud. Hold on one second, just getting into my house. Hmm, quiet. Sorry, just got home. We talk, we chat, about a 10 minute conversation. Then at the end of it, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go back into interrogation right now. I gotta go, gotta go, bye. Interrogation? I he was at home. In your house? <laughs> Interesting. The reason for this phone call Wait. was, he was assigned to a special mission, top secret, where he had to lose his phone. So he said he's calling all the important people in his phone, letting them know they will no longer be able to contact him on this phone ever again. Okay? Interesting. If you're going on a mission so top secret where you need to lose your phone, that you're allowed to call people before and let them know about it. Seems counterintuitive if you ask me. And you guessed it. Three months later, I get a text from this so-called dead phone with lyrics to our old song together. So, I rest my case. Mm. I feel like at this point I've done more investigative work than he ever has. But I don't know. What do you think? Girl, I think he's an FBI agent for sure. Like, come on, that's totally normal. As someone who has dated several FBI agents, doesn't seem out of character to me. I think this is like enjoyable for him, you know? Like he took it so far. It was like a game, you know? Like how, how many lies can I tell? And this woman will still sleep with me. 
This man is living in a movie. It is quite possible that he actually believes all of this stuff. You are dating a crazy person. You were dating a crazy person. A pathological liar, so to speak. Ain't a doctor, but he sounds like a pathological liar. But honestly though, I would be a little careful because it seems like you're kind of exposing his identity here and, and um, the government might come for you. So be careful about what you say. Story time. So I remember when my ex decided that he was gonna try to be slick and save a girl name under a man name in his phone so I wouldn't know he was cheating on me. Now I knew something was going on, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. You know what I'm saying? Like I could never catch him in the act. And I'm one of them people who wanted to be clear as day, okay? Picture this, we were both butt naked, banging on the bathroom <laughs> floor. Baby, I wanna be standing in the doorway. Cause when I bring it to the table, you better believe I'm coming with nothing but the hits. Okay, nothing but the hits. Baby, I said to myself, Myself said, huh? Said, go through that phone and look under the male names. Why? I don't know, but I did it. Now, to have a girl name saved under a male name and still be calling her by her actual name is crazy. You didn't alert the others. You didn't tell them that they were under investigation. So, you know what I did? I changed it back. Okay, how are we supposed to know who calling us if you gonna have it under the wrong name, silly? <laughs> you so silly. Let me put it back for you. Every time that phone ring, I feel like I turned into an owl. The way my neck did a 360 degree <laughs> turn to ask, who's that? She ain't called yet. So he feeling good. He feeling confident. He being nonchalant with the phone. Oh, he leaving it Ooh. right beside me. stepping off. Trying to show me he's trustworthy. But baby, let me tell you this. Patience is a virtue. Okay? She's moving because in the shadows, you babe. Know it, it was lights, camera, Action! The surround sound of disbelief on this man's face when Ashley's name popped up on the phone was worth waiting for. I said, Ashley calling? You gonna answer it? Ashley on the phone? Ashley calling right here, you see it? Ashley right here, she calling. You gonna answer the phone? He said, I don't know no Ashley. I said, that's crazy because somebody gotta save the name under Ashley and oh, just so happened somebody did that. So I told him. <laughs> I just did you a favor and changed it back. Cause how you gonna know who actually calling if you keep saving the numbers under the wrong name? It could be a state of emergency. It could be serious. You don't know who calling. I'm trying to help you out. Now answer the phone. Y'all, I lied to you not. That man threw that phone clean over the back. <laughs> I didn't do nothing but go down there and get it. I said, hello, Ashley. You really done said, I'm gonna move in the shadows with this one. Like, she was so far in the corner, in the shadows, waiting for her time to strike in a little web, if you will, gathering her intel, cleaning her pincers. <laughs> she laid in wait for the perfect moment to strike and devour her lover. I'm just confused as to how you can treat this man any differently knowing what you know, you know? Like, it's it, it's gotta take a special kind of person to find something like that out and then still, like, put on a brave face and pretend to be in a relationship with them. All the while, you're just thinking, oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you real good and I'm gonna get you when it hurts. Because realistically, if you just ask him about it, gaslight you, lie, I mean, he did. He said, I don't know Ashley, I don't know who she is. And who is that? You waited until the moment when you had the evidence and you could confront him with the evidence and he could not lie to you. That is when you striked. Stroke? St striked? That was your time to strike? Just a little brain fart there, you know. Oh, but there's a part two. I like her hat. She looks like a flower. So he threw the phone clear over the balcony. And like I said, I just went down there and was like, Hello, Ashley. Now I could tell by the dedication of her allowing the phone to ring as long as she did, that Ashley elevator didn't go all the way to the top. Like if there was 10 floors, her stopped immediately at five. Okay, it's kind of like taking the stairs. It was just gonna take her a little longer to get there. Cause baby, why would you let that phone ring almost until the voicemail pick up? I would never, <laughs> okay? Do you have no shame? Sometimes I only let the phone ring once and then I hang up. Sometimes I hang up in the middle of people saying, hello? And then I put my phone on airplane mode so it looked like I tried. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. So Ashley like, uh, hello? I said, hey. She said, uh, who is this? 
I said, well, I was somebody's girlfriend, but now I'm just a girl with the strangest phone. Now, I don't mean to sound crazy, and I hope I don't sound ridiculous, but I don't know this man. If this man was walking down the street, I wouldn't know who he was. Sorry to this man. Then she says, oh, well, this is Ashley. I said, I know. Now, correct me if I'm wrong when I know that I'm right, but when I answered the phone, didn't I say, hello, Ashley? Now, off the rip, I don't know if she was waiting for her 15 minutes of fame or what, but... She goes straight into how long they have been talking, where they met at, what they be doing when they be meeting. You know what I'm saying? The things they be getting into. And I had to stop her right there. Please don't go no further because this has absolutely nothing to do with me. These sound like your problems now. I told her it sounds like you're up. dealing with a lot and you truly have your hands full. And then I wish her the best on their future endeavors. Because offloading to a complete stranger about your problems... It's crazy, okay? You're going to have to talk to the lady because I don't got the credentials. <laughs> My major is in sociology. Now, it's close, but it ain't quite that. Now, what I failed to mention is all while I'm talking to Ashley, baby, I had to do a little tussle and bustle to get up in the car. Okay, I was in here tussling and bustling. Now, the doors is locked and the windows is rolled up tightly because this man is in full sprint chasing behind the car while I'm driving around the neighborhood in my first therapy session with Ash. Now, what I will say is he probably would have caught up to me a lot faster if he had his own car. Now, you ain't here for me, but word on the street is he's still chasing behind that car to this day. <laughs> the only problem is I'm too far gone, baby. You'll never catch up. Y'all be easy. Peace. I'm sorry, but I feel like you just narrated like a crime drama. You know those like old fashioned like, and then she showed up to my office looking extra sweet, crying, needing someone to turn to. <laughs> I'm here for it. This is cinematic. This is a masterpiece. I low-key think that she was trying to like claim him, you know, even after finding out that she, you know, you, you were together with this man. I feel like she's just trying to essentially say that she lays claim to him. And in that case, I feel like you can have him. He's yours. You can keep that. <laughs> Here's a goodie bag. Nice little goodie bag for you. All right, let's do kind of a funny story time about my ex-husband. <laughs> this just happened at Christmas, and all I can say is the audacity. So my mom and I split um, HBO Crave, which is a streaming service here in Canada, um, just because we both really like it. So for the longest time, we always only had my name as the account, and then we would just, you know, watch whatever. So back in, like, November, beginning of November... My mom says to me, oh, you've been watching White Lotus. And I said, what the heck's White Lotus? And she's like, well, you're watching it. And I was like, no, I'm not. What are you talking about? Then fast forward to when season two started coming out. She goes, see, you're watching White Lotus. You're watching White Lotus. I said, mom, like, I have no idea what White Lotus even is. Like, what are you talking about? So one night, her and I are sitting together. We're watching this show on HBO. I think we were watching RuPaul. And she says, see, you're watching White Lotus. And I went, no, I'm not. I don't even know what the show is about. I know Jennifer Coolidge is in it. I don't know what the show is about. And she goes, well, you're, you're watching it. And I went, oh my God. So on Crave, you can go watch, go to like your profile. You can see watch history. So you can, and you can see like when people watch certain shows. And sure it enough. It was your ex. It had, uh, like in about October, there were shows that were starting to populate that my mom and I had not watched. We realized that my ex-husband had cracked into my our Crave account oh, and was brother. watching it without actually paying for oh, it. Oh man. He had been had started season two. It had all been released, and I had looked at my mom and I said, wait, I'm like, what episode is he on? He was on episode seven out of eight. So what did I what? do? I waited until he was 45 minutes into the episode because you can see that. Are you so and I out? went on to my crave. I deleted everything yes. so i signed off on every device and then i password locked my actual profile to a password that only my mom and dad and i knew that he had never yes heard of. babe yes so he got kicked out right before he got to finish season two of white lotus oh good the audacity of that man <laughs> like oh, he took spousal baby. support from me and yet he still oh, couldn't baby. afford to watch his own crave oh, or buy his own baby. subscription Oh, you did your baby. Oh, you didn't get to watch your show. Are you stealing from your ex wife? Oh, you poor baby. You're stupid. Honestly, how are you not embarrassed? How are you not embarrassed that you need to watch 
crave on your ex-wife's account. How? How does that not embarrass you? How can you show your face in public? I have secondhand embarrassment for you, sir. I wish that I could pay to see his reaction when you signed him out of that account. And he was watching the very, very end of it. Oh, you know when Jennifer Coolidge, you know, you know, if anybody hasn't seen it, I'm not gonna spoil it, but you know, season two, Jennifer Coolidge, you know? The gays! He's sitting on his couch, just loving his life, watching the telly. Oh! Oh! It was a sad day. A sad, sad day. Honestly? The only appropriate reaction to not being able to watch The End of White Lotus season two. But he kind of did it to himself, didn't he? It's because he had the audacity. He doesn't know any better. Subscribe!